in this video trade. It's a trading day that didn't quite go well for me. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so trading doesn't always go your way, right? We know this, this is the real world we live in. And sometimes, you know, recognizing when you're just not in tune with the market is so, so valuable and really, really, really helps your bottom line. So in this video, guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a day where I was trading and I was just out of sync with it. I kind of had left things alone. Then I came in, I traded, I took a small loss and I really, really managed that loss well. But then I, I was looking at other trades and things just weren't lining up. I just wasn't sure. I didn't like what I was looking at. So I'm gonna talk through exactly what I saw on the screen, why I didn't take it. Yes, it was a losing day. Losing days happen, of course they do. But importantly, how I didn't let it get into a more of a deeper losing day, which is probably something that 10 years ago I would have done. All right, guys, let's hit the screens. Okay, so I'm on the big screen um, this time. I'm gonna kind of analyze this chart. So this chart is uh, the Dow. So it's um, a kind of a CFD representation of the Dow. And it's a one minute chart and we'd opened kind of here. We'd, uh, they, they were not to kind of complicate things too much and go into too much kind of complex depth here with this. But the point is we've kind of been chopping around, okay? We've been sitting here chopping around. Uh, it was a Friday, it'd been a good week for me. I wasn't that desperate to trade it. I'd kind of hit a, a kind of high watermark level on the account. Um, and yes, accept that that's probably not a, a great reason to stop and you know there's something perhaps to work on. But Friday as well, I didn't want to get caught up in something. I didn't really want to go into the weekend, you know, feeling bad about my trading. I had a great week and I thought, you know what, if there's something out there, I'll take it, but I'm not going to force anything. And the market as well was very, very quiet. You know, we'd opened up, we we're down a bit, we we're up a bit mean reverting, just oscillating in this kind of small 60 point range or so, 70 point range. So yes, there was opportunity there and, and possibly, you know, fading these breakout highs would have been something I'd have done earlier in the week. I just didn't fancy it. And I said, you know what, I'm not gonna trade it, but I get something good. Anyway, we came and sure enough, in the market conditions at the moment, a tweet came out from China to say something like, we're not gonna be buying, we're not gonna be meeting up and buying these agricultural products from the US. Fine, whatever, it is what it is. So the market kind of came down. I got alerted to this. I came back to the screen and I'm looking at the screen. So whilst I'm looking at the screen, um, we'd kind of bounce back up pretty aggressively. Now this is really the situation and history of what's happened with tweets at the moment. We bounce up and it's kind of the market undoes it and drifts back up. So I thought, you know what? It's a range bound market condition. We're still in a longer term range as well. Uh, we haven't done much damage to the kind of 15 minute chart. And so you know, I'm gonna look for a, maybe a, re a retracement back to the VWAP or, so, or some kind of open level or even you know back to the close. And okay, so what do I need to see? I need to see that really we're not holding at lows because if we come down here, let's just get a drawing pan out. If we'd come down here and we'd sat at lows here, I wouldn't want it, right? I'd be looking to press that short because price action is telling me, hey, we've had a 200 point reprice to the downside and we're holding at lows you know what, any fake up that comes back, I'm gonna be all over that, I'm gonna be smashing that short, looking for a further push lower, because it's Friday night panic, everyone's running for the door. However, we didn't get that, we got a bounce back up, and we got a quite aggressive bounce back up. So I'm just assuming this is a liquidity vacuum, we've pushed down, we're popping back up, uh, we had a kind of, what do we have a hundred point bounce pretty much. And then we stayed up at the highs and we started to, uh, I didn't mean to do that, let me just get rid of that for a second. Um, crosshairs, we started to kind of sit at these highs, right? And to me, that looked like it was just a little bit of resistance there. And I thought, well, you know what, this, you know, normally you'd be looking for a further push lower, right? But because it's so quick and it's based on a tweet and it's this and that and the other, and it's Friday and all this stuff, I kind of expected us to drift back up. And so I took a long on this dip here. So I'm buying a couple, I've actually scaled in a couple of units, uh, a couple of batch, batches as we're here and as we're here and as we're going here. So fine. But, and I'm thinking, okay, well actually my thesis is that we break out of here. I might add some more if we're here and then we're gonna sit with it and see if we can get a target of here or even a target back up here. So the risk reward ratio is okay. So my stop loss is gonna be around here. I've got a bit of a zone where I'm saying, you know what, I don't really want that trade. I fancy the thing was a little bit earlier than that, but it was around the kind of this sort of level. Um, and in fact, fundamentally, definitely it was. It was, it was this sort of level here. And uh, if I can get rid of that. And we can remove that there. Yes, so this is my kind of stop left loss level. Fine, no problem. 
thinking I don't want it to go drifting lower. The thesis is that we just kind of find a little bit of a bid. We break out of this resistance here and we're on our way. Uh, being critical, I could have perhaps waited until we had broken out and buy a, a kind of consolidation there. Perhaps that was a better trade, but you know, I thought this was an okay trade. I thought the thesis was okay, fine. And also as well, you can't see it, but the tick index, something I, I use, was still strong. It was still very, very positive. We kind of oscillated around to kind of that minus a thousand ticks. And then we come straight back up and we were kind of holding the positive ticks, which would indicate that the offers are being hit on the NYSE or across, the, across all the stocks. Uh, and so that indicates bullishness. So to me, it's a case of, well, you know, when we break through, when we break through, uh, it wasn't a first pullback type trade, which I talk about have the attributes of that for me at the time. Uh, it was holding too much, it had bounced too high. Loads of things that we talk about we don't want to see. It would have been much of a lower bounce, you know, another leg lower, that kind of stuff. And so I'm there in this situation and I'm in the trade and, you know, as we can see, it didn't work out for me. I kind of didn't even wait for it to drift lower. It kept pushing, kept struggling, kept not working. So I ended up taking like literally a, a very small loss, a very small loss. Um, and it wasn't the end of the world. You know, it wasn't the end of the world. And I then was looking and saying, okay, well, you know, what's it gonna do now? You know, is there another trade on it? It was grinding low. I still didn't think we had the downside in it. I really didn't think we had a downside movement. And then we spiked up and I felt myself wanting to get involved in this spike thing. You know, this spike's obviously, I'm just a bit late to the party. You know, now we've pushed above this high. I can see I was kind of moving back here. We just needed a catalyst. This isn't really sellers, this was just drift. And other buyers are step back in, they're gonna buy it up until the close. But you know what? I stepped out of it because the tick index is what I'm using. I'm looking at the SPY as well. I'm looking at the S&P. I'm looking at the Dow. I'm looking at gold. I'm looking at all the things and it just looked odd. I couldn't put my finger on it. I didn't have a good read. I'm thinking you're flip-flopping here. You're long one minute. Then you're thinking you're seeing, you know, that you're wrong. Then you're seeing it bid. You know, how are you FOMOing this? Are you going to start chasing this because you want that to happen so much? And I was like, you know what, I probably do. I probably do. I can take this small little loss. It's going to be completely irrelevant in the scheme of things. You know, 20, 20, 20 point loss, or whatever it was, 23 point loss. Nothing. You know, compared to the previous days, the week, it's an irrelevant blip. But you could make this into a damaging day if you let it. And so this is where perhaps experience comes in, guys. I'm like, listen, there's opportunity here. We're either going to push the lows or we're going to push the highs, but I don't have a good read on which one we're going to do. And because I don't have a good read on which one we're going to do, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to go swimming. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. And in fact, exactly what I did do. Went to the gym, went swimming, was checking it. And I just saw it kind of flipping around, dipping around and pushing back down. And what I've shorted it there, you know, maybe if I hadn't already got involved there, I might have looked at that and gone, you know what, that's just really struggling for so long, we could drift lower. But it was Friday afternoon, plenty of reasons not to take the trade. Um, it is what it is. So guys, the importance of this and why I wanted to share it with you, wasn't necessarily to go through the trade and say, oh, look, I took a loser. It's to say, hey, listen, you know, the internal dialogue I was having with myself at that point afterwards wasn't the loser because I managed that quite well. I didn't let it go to the stop because it just wasn't behaving right. And then sometimes, obviously, you don't have to let it go to your stop. Sometimes you have to. You know, listen, it's got to be my stop or nothing. But when you see the behavior is not quite right, you don't quite like it. I scaled out for a couple of batches. I waited a bit more and I scaled out some more. And, and with the ads and stuff, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a bad of a loss at all. It could have been kind of a, a, not, a not a pleasant loss. But the point is, is that what you do after that is what really affects the PL. That's going to be irrelevant to the PL. But if I chased that move and got stopped, then I, maybe I'd try to go on the short side and got stopped on that subsequent drive up. You know, that one losing trade could have turned into three or four losing trades, could have turned into you know, a, a much larger day that was more significant and could have kind of really upset the week. I wouldn't have let it undo the week completely, but it still could have been upsetting. And actually, by the way, guys, you know, years ago, I would have let that undo the week completely. I could have let that turn into subsequent very poor trades that could have done damage to the account. That's the kind of thing where I can't quite get a read. I feel frustrated, I can't get a read. I get stopped out, I try and chase it. I do this and do that. You know, that behavior, you know, is, is you've got to be aware of it still. And that's why I'm kind of telling you, I'm saying, listen, I felt like, oh, do I want to get this? And I recognize that. No, 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 you don't. This is not the trade you want to be taking. You haven't got a good read on the market. You haven't shown to have a good read on the market today. You had a good read on the market this week. Cap it off 
and then just go into fresh on Monday. It's not going to be an issue. It doesn't matter if you close on highs in the week or you close slightly down from a, a one losing trade on the Friday. No big deal. Would be a big deal if you start trying to press something that you really don't have an edge on. And so the moral of this, guys, I'm going to share more of you. If you like this kind of stuff, then you know, let me know. Give me a thumbs up and share some of the thought process behind this. If it helps you, that's great. If it doesn't, then we won't do any more of it. If it does, then that's fantastic. Um, you know, so I think the moral of this is you know, be aware of your weaknesses. Be aware when you're not the market isn't doing what you think it's going to do. When you're confused, which I was, I, I can't quite work. Your ticks are doing this, this is doing that. It's not doing what I expected to do. Then stay out because confusion doesn't help. And you compare that to a time when, you know, compare it to a time maybe a few days ago, I just felt I was doing everything right. Trade after trade was just it's perfectly in tune with the market, with the flows. I was just getting those pings, those pops, and it was just beautiful. You know the feeling and the difference. And recognizing that and knowing, you know what? This could be dangerous. Step out, come back again. The market's always going to be there. And that's why I think you don't need to trade every day. You don't need to trade every trade. You don't need to be pressing all the time. But when you're right, time to press. And when you don't feel right, step back, trade another day. All right, guys, take care. Keep your risk manager, whatever you're doing. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.